All right, guys. You will be absolutely amazed to hear. It is a cold, nasty, gray, rainy, just yuck midwinter day here. In mid-August, that would be a just godforsaken. What is it? Tuesday, August 21st, 2024. Uh, Good Lord, hearing it is 57 degrees right now. 57 degrees at one o'clock in the afternoon on August 21st. <clears throat> but I hear Austin, Texas is roasting today. So uh, <clears throat> pick your poison, I guess. But it almost feels like, you know, it is days, it's just never ending day after day after day after day like this that you say fuck this you know i might as well j just dig a big hole in the ground and just live underground and get away from this nasty rain and cold and dark bleh, bleh. anyway so uh i think this is an appropriate day to hear from our old buddy Indy Ka over there in uh, Sri Lanka this man whose name I will not even begin to pronounce we haven't heard from Indy Ka over at medium.com in a while if I ever do get back to interviewing we will definitely bring this man on the show but uh, Indy Ka He's in a bit of a doomer mood himself, and he's going to talk about mining, about mining today in his The Way Down in the Mines. Yes, The Way Down in the Mines. Years ago, Merle Travis, I don't believe someone from Sri Lanka has ever heard of Merle Travis, but you go, brother. Years ago, Merle Travis sang, Seek not your fortune in the dark, dreary mines. It will form as a habit and seep in your soul till the stream of your blood runs as black as the coal. And yet every fortune from the silver of Athens to the black gold of Kentucky has been sought in the mines. And every time it seemed to work, from digging into Hades and thinking we pulled a fast one on the devil, every dim simulation of heaven has been purchased by digging towards hell as fast as possible and getting there eventually. From the collapse of localized stone, bronze, and Iron Age civilizations to the globalized collapse of this fossil-fueled one. As old Merle said, like a fiend with his dope and a drunkard his wine, a man will have lust for the lure of the mine. Yes. This observation is older than, than old Merle, and it is deeper than Kentucky coal. Digging up the bowels of the earth has always been noxious and toxic, and people have been warning about it for millennia, as Pliny the Elder said in the first century, quote, the fractured mountain falls asunder in a wide gap with a crash which it is impossible for human imagination to conceive and likewise with an incredibly violent blast of air. The miners gaze as conquerors upon the collapse of nature. Um, witnessing the environmental destruction of even pre-industrial mining in 400 BC, Plato said, <clears throat> what now remains compared with what then existed 
is like the skeleton of a sick man. All the fat and soft earth wasted away in the bare framework of the land being left. So these are, uh, I guess this is, these quotes are coming from a collection by someone named J. Donald Hughes. And I don't know if it's a book or just an article titled Environmental Problems of the Greeks and Romans. And so this is what J. Donald Hughes uh, said in his book. <clears throat> the human cost during this period was horrendous. He's talking about the ancient Greek civilization. The human cost during this period was horrendous. Thousands of slaves, men, women, and children owned by affluent citizens with contracts granted by city magistrates did heavy work under hellish conditions, including tight spaces, a lack of oxygen, danger of collapse, oppressive heat, poisons, long hours underground, and poor food. The silver produced annually <clears throat> was about 2.6 tons, but silver represented a tiny percentage of the ores averaging one part silver to 429 parts lead. Humans were exposed to lead by breathing dust or the volatile lead vapor released by the smelting process. Lead poisoning helps explain the short lifespans of mine slaves they typically died after working four to nine years. And um, back to Indica. <clears throat> Mining has always been gross, but it is all but it's always increased the gross domestic product. So the greed virus possession our elites has always pursued it. In his own folksy way, Merle illustrates the ongoing wages of this deadly sin, singing of the mines of Ebenezer, Kentucky. This would have been in uh, Depression era United States. It's dark as a dungeon and damp as the dew, where danger is double and pleasures are few, where the rain never falls. Ah, sounding pretty good today. And the sun never shines, kind of like the Finger Lakes in New York. It's dark as a dungeon way down in the mines. Yet, from these dark dungeons comes power, comes wealth, comes light. Though the methods were always toxic and dangerous, the results seem to make it all right. However, all of these centuries of mining have been a deal with the devil, quite literally, as we are digging up his territory. And the first rule of devils is that the devil always gets his due. Ancient civilizations collapsed, at least partly due to deforestation and environmental degradation, and now it is happening to us too, just on an accelerated schedule and global scale because we turbocharged the process with fossil fuels. <clears throat> Today, people are trying to reverse this process with renewable energy but this misunderstands how deep the problem is and where the solution comes from. It's just more mining. Both ancient civilizations and early colonialism were powered entirely by renewable energy, and they did huge 
huge damage with just wood burning and simple tools. As Plato said in around 400 BC, looking upon the wastelands, they already created, and this is a long quote from Plato, what now remains compared with what then existed is like the skeleton of a sick man, all the fat and soft earth wasted away and only the bare framework of the land being left. But at that time, the country, meaning ancient Greece, at that time, the country was undamaged and had much forest land in its mountains of which there is evidence even to this day, meaning 400 BC. For there are some mountains which now have nothing but food for bees, but they had trees no long time ago, and rafters from those fell there to roof the largest buildings are still sound. Cultivated trees grew tall and strong, and the soil produced plentiful pasturage for flocks. It was enriched by yearly rains from Zeus and did not lose it as now by flowing from the bare ground into the sea. But the soil it had, you, you know, in before ancient Greece, but the soil it had was deep and it received the water, storing it up in the retentive loamy soil, and let water flow down from high ground to the low ground of every district, providing abundant springs to feed streams and rivers. <clears throat> Even now, meaning 400 BC, there are still shrines left over from the old days at sites of former springs as evidence of the truth of this account of the land. Thank you, Doomer Plato. Sounding a lot like uh, some of the Don Quixote soliloquies. It reminds me a lot of the famous acorn soliloquy uh, in front of the Gotthards uh, from, from Don Quixote. Anyway, <clears throat> as Shelley said about the kingdom of the apocryphal Ozamandias, quote, nothing beside remains round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. As Aboriginal philosopher Tyson Yunka Porter says, it is no accident that the ruins of the world's oldest civilizations are mostly in deserts now. It was not desert before that. Yunka Porta continues saying, quote, <clears throat> A city is dependent on the importation of resources from interconnected systems beyond its borders. Sounding a lot like William Reese here. The city places itself at the center of these systems and strips them to feed its growth, disrupting cycles of time and land and weather and water and ecological exchange between the systems. The exchange is now only going one way. Matter and energy are still neither created nor destroyed in this reaction. They are directed into static heaps rather than cycled back through and between systems. Close quote. <clears throat> Going back to Indica, mining is simply an extension of that giant sucking sound underground, and it is a much deeper problem than modernity. Mining 
has always defined civilization. Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, etc. We are what we mine, but the problem is it's not ours. As Pliny the Elder, the best Pliny, said, quote, Mountains were made by nature herself to serve as a kind of framework for holding together the inner parts of the earth. We quarry them and haul them away for a mere whim. Presaging Malcolm X, Pliny Sr. also said, but least of all do we search for means of healing, for how few in their digging are inspired by the desire to cure. Pliny the Elder was speaking thousands of years ago when they had barely scratched the surface. We are in much deeper shit now. We have industrially stripped mined the earth and now we want to industrially strip mine it again for renewable energy. This ignores the first rule of holes, which is stop digging. All of this greedy mine, mine, mine is part of the gift, parentheses, curse of Prometheus. Aeschylus portrayed Prometheus as the bringer of mining as well as fire, and you know how that worked out for him. That, prov that proverbial Meth Prometheus, according to Aeschylus, said, quote, Next, the treasures of the earth, the bronze, iron, silver, gold, hidden deep down. Who else but I can claim to have found them first. Sounds kind of like Donald Trump. <clears throat> what the proverbial Prometheus overcame was the deep animal fear of fire, including the forges hidden in the deep. But that fear was there for a reason, which we ignored at our peril, while the fruits of the labor are sweet, the people doing the mining have always known only bitterness. It has always been obvious from Plato to Merle Travis that the miner's lot is misery, ill health, and early death. And these are also the societal consequences in the long term which is now. Hence, I think of the wish curse uttered by the apocryphal miner in Dark as a Dungeon. He says, quote, I hope when I'm gone and the ages shall roll, my body will blacken and turn into coal. Then I will look down from the door of my heavenly home and pity the miner digging my bones. <clears throat> what we should remember is what every miner knows, a deep fear of the deep. This is something Pliny the Elder, as deep as his insight was, only learned at the last minute by killing himself. When Mount Vesuvius erupted, Pliny the Younger Quote, decided that reading about the past was more important to him than observing the present, close quote. But Pliny the Elder rushed towards the eruption just as generations had flocked to the rich soil around the still active volcano as the crazy and I think allegorical true story continues, quote, demonstrating unwarranted calm in the face of danger, Pliny the Elder bathed, dined, and took a nap. 
By then, the stones and ash had piled up so deep that they threatened to trap him in his room. He and his friends realized that if they remained there, they would be buried, so they went down to the shore in total darkness with pillows tied on their heads as protection against falling rocks. Pliny, an obese man who had trouble breathing, died, overcome by ash gases and overexertion. His companions had to abandon his body. It was found two days later, his nephew learned, clothed and looking more asleep than dead. And so, here we are today, looking more asleep than dead and equally doomed. It has always been dangerous digging towards hell, and we were always fools to think such processes could be controlled. What we have unleashed with industrial civilization is, in fact, a giant man-made volcano now flooding our sensors with all kinds of warnings. Yet, even in these obviously last days, we bathe, dine, and take naps while stones and ash trap us in our stately rooms. Oh, how I pity the alien miner digging our bones. Amen. Brother Indica, the alien miner digging our bones. But anyway, I need to go uh, dig up some factory farmed chicken to cook for my little dog. Yes, I cook for my dog. And the dog says, Pop, would you shut up? and cook me my dinner while you still can. They claim sunshine in the Finger Lakes tomorrow with a balmy high of 72 degrees. I will believe it when I see it. Bye guys.